Greetings and uh, welcome back. Thanks for joining me again. So this week I want to start a new series about how to make coins appear. In my last series we talked all about how to make coins vanish and that was a three-part series so go check that out too. But this week uh, this is the first part of this series which I think will be three parts again. And I'm going to go over different ways on how we can make coins appear. So let's get into it. Alright guys, so one way to start thinking about how you can make a coin appear is to look at a vanish in reverse. So for example, in the last series on how to vanish a coin, the last video in that series I looked at different steals. So what's a steal in reverse? Well, it would be to load a coin into what the audience perceives as an empty hand. So in this first video about appearances, I'm going to look at different loading techniques. Now, of course, these aren't all the techniques out there, but these are a few basic ideas to get you going and, you know, throw into the mix of what you're already doing. So the first technique of loading a coin would just be a, a simple wash technique. And there, you can make a coin appear. So I've started out with the coin in Classic Palm. And you can, you can reach in your pocket beforehand and Classic Palm that or just already have it in palm, knowing that you're about to show somebody something. So you would start out kind of just casually showing your hands and uh, you say, watch this. So the crucial piece to this technique is allowing a little bit of time delay before the effect happens in the spectator's mind. So up to this point, they don't, they don't know that anything's happened yet but you've effectively shown two empty hands and then the effect begins where you tell them to watch. So you don't want to bring any attention to the effect before it happens. Uh, you want to bring their attention to this moment now. And this is probably the easiest way to get started uh, having a coin appear in a surprising way. So all we're doing here is the coins in Classic Palm you want to slightly point to your left so you can get that Molini subtlety where the coin is hidden from view. And this isn't a display, it's just uh, really quick. And, and you're, remember, you're not telling them to watch now. You're just, you're kind of thinking about, uh, oh, let me see. Uh, so it's in this action, the right hand comes down with the thumb above and then turns over the left hand and the hands reverse. Now the left hand thumb is above the right hand and you've dropped that coin off in that transfer. So I'll keep my hands separated so you can see that moment. Now it's after this loading that you can pause again and you can take advantage of a Ramsey subtlety right before you tell them, all right, now watch. And then you reveal the appearance of the coin. So the coin begins in classic palm. You just wanna show your hands empty very casually using the Molini subtlety. So point to your left just a little bit. And then the right hand comes down the left palm, turning over. If you turn your whole torso, then the hands switch places. You finish with the left hand coming down the right palm. And then have the coin appear. Like I said, you can take advantage of the Ramsey display here. Right before the appearance of the coin. So in slow motion, right hand comes down the left palm, turns over, drops the coin, 
onto the left fingers. The hands switch position. Now the left hand goes down to right palm and comes up. We now bring attention to the left hand where you show the effect of the coin appearing. Now piggybacking off that idea, just loading from classic palm, uh, this is a really old technique from a magician in France called L'Homme Masqué, which is the masked magician. Uh, instead of dropping this coin off, we can, we can show the hand empty beforehand just by uh, doing this. Now all I've done there is, is the first part just with the Molini subtlety. But now you can show this hand empty. At this point, you can tell them to watch. So watch this hand. It just takes a little rub and I can get a coin to appear. So all I've done there is close my fist, but allow an opening between the thumb and index finger. And that's where the coin is dropped in, in the guise of rubbing the back of the hand or any kind of magical gesture you wanna do. A lot of, I think a lot of magicians overdo this, like the old David Roth teeps, who would kind of do that stuff. But really, it's you need a reason to just come close to your fist. So it can be as quick as this, and the coin is in there. This is a great, uh, like I said, piggybacking off this idea of uh, a wash technique with a little more, maybe a little more style to it. And you have the advantage of showing your left hand completely empty right before the appearance. So again, the coin is in classic palm. Use Molini subtlety. Now you can show your left hand as you close it up and show the appearance of that coin. So the left hand closes, the right hand comes above the hole created between the thumb and first finger and drops that coin in. The left hand just needs to allow that coin to fall inside as it's turning from a vertical position to horizontal position. And then the right hand rubs or waves to create that magical moment. Now a similar technique to low masque is the Vernon load, which is usually done from a thumb palm but again, you have the advantage of showing the left hand empty and with a wave, you can show the appearance of the coin. Now, like I said, this is mostly done from thumb palm as the, as the hand goes to wave over, the left fingers just open a little bit so that coin can be tossed in, captured into the left hand in the guise of, of waving over your left hand. But you can do this from a classic palm or even a finger palm. It just takes a little practice with each of those. And it's all a timing thing. And you don't want the movement of the left hand to be exaggerated. You just need enough of an opening for that coin to shoot in there. So how do we get from a classic palm, if that's where we're starting, into a thumb palm? Well, we, we can do the Molini display here, and then as we drop and come up, that classic palm coin falls to finger, finger palm, and then fingers close back into a fist, so that coin is thumb palmed. So just in the action of dropping and raising, that coin's in thumb palm now. So you can show here, drop, and then wave and have the coin appear. Or like I said, you can keep it in classic palm and then do it from a classic palm position. I've also seen Jeff Lada do a nice load without the throwing. He would just come up like this 
and, and just lay that coin in there, just like this, from thumb palm. So it doesn't even have to be a throwing action. You can just kind of place it in there like that. So again, we're in classic palm. We can use the Molini display. Show the left hand empty as it closes. And that coin appears. So as that hand's closed, you're just lifting your fingers enough so that coin can be dropped in as the right hand waves. Now the audience isn't seeing this moment because of your right hand. But try to keep that at a minimum. And you don't need much because your hands are so close. It's easy to shoot that coin in. So from finger palm, you can do the same thing. Or from a thumb palm. Now if you're starting in classic palm, you just drop, allow that coin to fall, make a fist, and it's in thumb palm. So if you've done the Molini display, drop your right hand as you're showing your left hand to the audience and do this adjustment. So from down to up, you're there. Down to up, I'm there. So that's loading from thumb palm. Now, another old technique that comes from Cardini, uh, you could start in classic palm or finger palm, but you'd, you'd show nothing there, and then kind of take pieces from the sky, and then have the coin appear there. So it's the same idea. We're loading the coin in to the empty hand. It's just a matter of when we're doing it. That's what differentiates these different techniques. So like I said, you're, you can do it from finger palm or classic palm. But it's this action of uh, kind of a Ramsey display here with the left fingers curled just enough so this area of the fingers is hidden from the audience's view. Now you could place pieces of stuff from the sky. But on one of those trips, you're going to leave that coin in the left hand. And again, it's, it's shielded from the audience because of the angle of your left fingers. Now you're hearing that on my ring now. But... Now this is a fun one because your hands seem empty up to the last moment before that coin appears. And it's just a really startling appearance. So with the Cardini method, same thing, Molini display. You're there. It's just a matter of loading that in to the left hand fingers. So you're there. And then there. Again, this can be from finger palm. or classic palm. Now this last technique is a really fun one to practice. Uh, it's one of my favorites. And again, it's piggybacking off all these techniques of loading the coin into the empty left hand. So you'd start off like this and say, watch. And the coin appears. Now the cool thing about this one is the hands are far apart the whole time. So the way I'm getting the coin from my right hand to my left hand is just a muscle pass. But it's under the guise of just waving. But it's cool because your hands are this far apart the whole time. And apparently the audience has seen nothing in your hands to begin with. And then at the last moment, they see an undeniably empty hand before you wave and come away to show the appearance of the coin. Now this is a really good one to do, but it's going to take a lot of mirror practice. And the main thing is the timing. And of course your angles are a little more limited, but you're pointed to the left. And even people on your left 
up to a point they won't be able to see because of your right arm. So really it's your extreme left that uh, you would flash. And of course no one can see what's going on from about 70 degrees and then further back because your back's turned. But it's just a matter of timing your wave so that the muscle pass happens as your hands are aligned. Now you can do it on the way down or you can choose to do it on the wave coming up. I found that it doesn't really matter, but I mostly do it coming down because you have gravity working against you. It's easier to do it, release that coin on your, on your way down. So you're here and you don't want to do a huge wave because you want to, you want to cover this, this area here. So don't wave like this or way down. Just keep it right in here. Wave from your wrist, I guess, is a good rule of thumb, not from your elbow. So you're covering an area that's wider than your hand. So they will definitely not see that coin as it shoots in there. Another little tip, if you're getting good at this, try to shoot that coin as you're closing your left fingers. So the audience sees this, but at the last second, you're getting that coin in there. And again, it's a timing thing. It's a uh, mirror practice, but you'll be able to start getting that coin in there with the smallest and smallest space to get it. Now the muscle pass method, you might want to practice in steps. So first getting the muscle pass down. Now I don't use the muscle pass as a flourish. I don't have much advice. If you're looking to do this anti-gravity coin, uh, I choose not to do show off type of stuff. So I mainly use the muscle pass in a horizontal direction. And uh, the only advice I could give is everyone's hand is different, but I, I like to keep the coin high. And you want to trap that skin. And that's what the coin is skipping off of. So it's you're applying enough pressure so that you want that coin to slip off that creates the momentum which causes it to fly. The only advice I can give on the anti-gravity thing is I see some people doing it straight on or even this way where the coin is visible. The problem with this is the audience sees your, your cramped hand and even if they don't know the method, they're looking right at it. So my only advice is if you're right-handed, turn to your left because your hand looks the best from this direction as you, as you shoot that up in the air. Also, don't propel it with your hand. You've got to get good enough to where you're only popping it. So for this to look convincing, there should be no throwing movement. Your hand should be still and that coin should just shoot up. And again, I don't do that, but those are things I see that uh, make it look bad. So that's it for this week, guys. Uh, thanks for coming and watching again. I appreciate all your support. And uh, stick around for the next one in the Making a Coin Appear series. Thanks.